My brothers and sisters in Christ, it's good to be home. I just came back from Rome this week uh, from the uh, uh, celebration of the uh, imposition of the pallium to the uh, new archbishops. Uh, it was a beautiful ceremony with uh, Pope Benedict XVI. And it was especially beautiful because, as you all know, it was his 60th anniversary of ordination to the priesthood. So it was a, a great celebration uh, for the Universal Church as we all gathered together with the Holy Father, representing uh, m uh, many archdioceses from all over the world. We were 40 archbishops from all over the world. Um, uh, for, and I want to thank all of you for your prayers and all the people of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles for praying for me during these past weeks as we uh, celebrate this special moment in the life of the Church, in the life of the Archdiocese, and in my personal life. It was a wonderful pilgrimage. We were um, close to 300 going from Los Angeles. Uh, it was a very spiritual time. We were able to celebrate Mass at some of the basilicas in Rome, uh, St. Mary Major, asking our Blessed Mother for her intercession. We celebrated also Mass at the uh, Basilica of St. Peter, at the altar of the chair. Then we uh, also went to Assisi, and we had the blessing of celebrating Mass at the uh, um, church of uh, Our Lady of the Angels in the Porciuncula, where really everything began for the city of Los Angeles and for this, our beautiful cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels. That's where St. Francis of Assisi received his vocation in that area and started his mission of rebuilding the church as he was called to do. So it was really a beautiful, beautiful uh, spiritual uh, time for all of us that were there. And I hope that for everyone in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. And I have to say that the Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI, sent his uh, apostolic blessing to all the people in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. So today, in a special way, I bring you the greetings and the blessing of the Holy Father. And that you can make sure that I got the pallium, I decided to wear it today. <laughs> so this is it. So it was a good trip. I got a new stall. It's a beautiful uh, liturgical um, vestment that, as you know, signifies the unity of the archbishops with the Holy Father and also reminds each one of us that we have to become the Good Shepherd in our archdiocese. So it was indeed a beautiful time, and uh, I'm grateful that uh, uh, we got the company of the prayers and the support of all the people of the archdiocese, and obviously you all were in my prayers in a special way. The readings today tell us in a fearful way that our relationship with God is something that is living and growing. The readings tell us that we must cultivate that relationship so that our faith in Jesus Christ bears good fruits. In the passage of the gospel that we just heard, Jesus spoke to us in that beautiful parable of the sower. It is beautiful to hear Jesus talking to us in parables. Sometimes he talks to us in a direct way, telling us exactly what we are supposed to do um, to be faithful to our, the demands of our Christian vocation. But sometimes he talks to us in parables. He talks to the apostles and in the apostles to all of us. He discovers to us the mysteries of the kingdom of God, how God works in our world 
and in our lives, in our souls. And he does it in that beautiful way, simple way, that we can really understand what he's talking to us about and, find, and that we can find the way to be faithful to our call. Really, the parables are the heart of his gospel. In his parables, he uses examples that are familiar to us from ordinary life. And that's the way that he teaches us about the extraordinary realities of our Christian lives. It sounds something that we can perfectly understand and that we can apply in our lives. Today's parable is a beautiful parable that we know well, the parable of the sower. And in the parable, we know that Jesus is the sower. We know that the seed that he sows is the Word of God. The seed is his, is his gospel. But the central part of the parable is not necessarily the sower or the seed. It is the soil. The soil is the human heart, the heart of each one of us. The seed of God's word and his love for us must fall on rich soil to nourish it. Everything depends on how prepared our hearts are to receive his gospel. Everything depends on what kind of response we are prepared to make to God's grace in our lives. So today we have to ask ourselves, how is the soil of my soul, my heart? How do I receive the word of God? And if we are sincere, we have to accept that sometimes our soul, the soul of our soul or our heart, is not totally well prepared. Sometimes we can be like that hard path in the parable. Because maybe we are not attentive enough to our spiritual lives. So the Word of God doesn't really sink in. Sometimes, maybe, the soil of our heart can be like rocky ground. Yes, we might be enthusiastic, but there's always the tendency of laziness or to approach things in a superficial way. The Word cannot take root in us. Sometimes we can also be like turning ground. We can, we have the temptation of getting caught up in the cares of the world. We can be too, co too uh, concerned about being comfortable. And when that happens, it suffocates the love of God inside us. So today, my brothers and sisters, let us try to ask for the grace of God to be always prepared in the best possible way to receive the Word of God in our souls, that we can really bear fruit, fruit of love and mercy in our homes, in our workplace, in our society. And let me just offer two practical suggestions. The first one, it seems to me as we see the beauty of God's love for us, maybe what we need to do as a first suggestion is to try to be more cheerful in our lives. Because what we get from society is most of the time negative things. And we have challenges. We see our own weaknesses. So we can fall into the temptation of sadness. But if we really understand, as St. Paul 
reminds us in the second reading of today's Mass that we are children of God. Don't you think that we should be always happy? We have to be happy people because we are sons and daughters of God. God is our loving and merciful Father. He's with us all the time in the middle of those sad circumstances of our society. So try to wake up every morning, every day, giving thanks to God because He is our Father and we are his sons and daughters. Let us try to be joyful every single day of our lives. And then the second suggestion is also very simple. Maybe the way in which we can really prepare the soil of our soul is to be more generous in small sacrifices. It can be little things in the way we eat or talk or spend our time or the way that we especially make time to be with God and others. Little things of sacrifice that take us away from, the, uh, from our selfishness and make our life a service to God and to others. Maybe a practical resolution of thinking, well, I know this person that I have to deal with every day at home, at work, in the circumstances of my life that I have a hard time with. Let's try this week to offer up that small sacrifice of smiling to that person, saying a kind word to somebody that is in a, going through a difficult situation, just making life better for others. Small sacrifices that really prepare our soul to be open to the grace of God. Those little sacrifices will help us to grow in humility. It will soften the soil of our hearts so that the word of Christ can grow more richly in our souls so that can, we can yield the fruits that Jesus expects from us. Each day, my brothers and sisters, we have to be, the tending, we have to be tending the soil of our hearts. We have to be receptive, open, cheerful with the spirit of penance and sacrifice to the beauty of God's love in our lives. May the Blessed Virgin Mary, who made herself a rich soil for God's word through her obedience of faith, help us to listen, to be receptive to God's word, and to be rich in, in works of love in our lives. 34 or 60 or 100 fold. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.